you know, I'm lucky, I guess, in that I've been around for quite a long time and seen, had those early experiences of over expectation and disappointment that I learned a long time ago to enjoy the journey and not get invested in what people were whispering about. Um, I remember doing Peter Pan, which was a big budget film that went massively over budget. Uh, it felt brilliant when we were making it. We were getting incredible feedback from the editing room and stuff, and the studio execs would fly out. It went over budget in time, so they came out to try and uh, pull PJ back, but they loved what they were seeing. And uh, they'd, you know, whispering things in my ear about Oscar campaigns and, you know, you'll never fly commercial again and all this nonsense. I was 40 and I, I didn't believe or care that they were saying any of this stuff because I was loving being in Australia, making this film. I was, you know, I loved PJ. I loved the process. I loved every day that we shot and all the kids who were in it. Um, and so when the film came out and was a catastrophe commercially, um, not critically, but commercially, uh, and yes, it was disappointing, but in, a, in the right size way. I hadn't built up expectations of anything or believed a word of what these people were saying and i've i've heard that on many films you know uh so you no know, when you make something you know, for me now at least for the last 15 20 years i'm able to just enjoy it and know that other people will get hugely invested and lose sleep weight and you know kidneys over whether it does or doesn't make its money back i i do uh, just briefly on on peter pan because i feel like that is that's a movie that, like, it, at least for people my age, maybe a little older, a little younger, that was a film that just, like, defined so much of what we loved. It was, like, the definitive Peter Pan for our generation, and I just can't, I can't imagine, like... It is, actually. Other... Yeah. Um, the thing about Peter Pan is it's the only version of Peter Pan that's ever been made. J.M. Barry wrote a book about a little girl who's hitting puberty. We couldn't write it today, but hitting puberty. She has a bedroom with her brothers, and her, her relatives are... You know, a dad, mum go, that's it now. You're going to be a woman. And those days, that meant you better have sex and children and build a family. And she's like, I share a bedroom. I play pirates at night. Nope, that's over. And that's terrifying. So that night, she dreams of a world in which she won't have to grow up. And there's a boy who still has his baby teeth. And uh, But if you read the book, uh, when she's there, she keeps wanting to play mother and father. And he's like, no, nah, let's climb trees. Let's go fight. And she goes, no, no, let's play mother and father because she's actually on the edge of puberty and young womanhood. And she, she recognizes she wants to practice being a mom. Uh, and there's only one man in that world. And he's strangely attractive sexually. There's something weird about his allure, but he's also repulsive. And he looks exactly like her father. It's a kind of Freudian nightmare. That's why it's always the same actor that plays both. Well, PJ made that book into a film, a brilliant film. No one else has done that. Disney made a version for toddlers and, you know, Pat Spielberg made a film about custard pie fights, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> Peter Pan was grown up a, a commodity trader. And uh, the version with Hugh Jackman had, you know, was a pastiche of all the films. No one's made Peter Pan. And, and that's why, oddly, when it, before the pandemic hit and I was going to conventions quite often where I was filming, um, people would come up in full Harry Potter gear, you know, dressed in cosplay, Wanting a, a, a signed Lucius Malfoy picture, they'd see a picture of Captain Hook and they'd go, oh, and they'd look over their shoulder almost guiltily and they'd go, that's actually my favorite film. Can, can I have one of those instead? Wow. And, and I would ask them why it's their favorite film and they couldn't explain why. It's because they were girls hitting puberty when they saw the film and it spoke to them like nothing else had ever spoken to them. So I, I, I truly think it's, it's the only Peter Pan that anyone's ever made. Yeah. I, th wow, that's beautiful. But but you 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 are right. Just with it with how it uh, adapted uh, the the book and everything. And I and I feel like that's why it has the staying power. I mean, yeah, I mean it wasn't a commercial yeah. success when it first came out, but it's like one of those films that like the first time you watch that, I mean, it is it's an experience. I mean, I I don't know. It's it's so. Ma I mean, it's you know, it's no. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I, well, I tell you what was really interesting uh, because it's not really changed. At the time, I was anxious about, you know, I wasn't sure that it was going to do so well. And, you know, uh, and partly we were doing these junkets all around the world. And the journalists were all going, so why another Peter Pan? And I'd give this clever answer about, you know, actually, we never made Peter Pan. Before. Um, but they all asked it. And, and I remember the producers going, you know, what? I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to show you the cards. And, you know, people have test previews and they fill in cards. It's digital now. But uh, and people who sat down and watched it. It had one of the highest would recommend it to other people scores they ever had the studio, maybe the highest. But that's for people who watch it. What happened when people saw the posters and they hadn't read my, you know, super clever, intricate answer is they went, oh, look, another Peter Pan. Well, yeah, I've seen it. And so they didn't 
go to see it. When they went to see it, they loved it. So the reason it's grown over the years in stature and success is when people come across it, they go, wow, this is really special. And look, also, it looks incredible. Everyone involved had just won or been nominated for Oscars for Moulin Rouge the year before. You know, it's really, it's really something special. But um, I feel bad for PJ, who was a magnificent filmmaker. And that, that was, you know, maybe his finest hour. And uh, he, he wasn't really credited for it because he didn't make money initially, which is really a marketing failure. Mm, yeah, I guess that was going to be my, my, my next question was like, what what do you think ultimately hindered this, the commercial success of that film? And I guess like you were saying, people just owe another yeah. pen. And, yeah. By the way, every time a film fails, it's always marketing. That's what it always says. And, and, and it probably isn't. It didn't capture the zeitgeist. So people were, maybe there was no poster and no campaign and no interview that would ever have made people think, oh, yeah, I want to go and see a new version of Peter Pan and capture the teenage audience and teenage girls prepubescent girls, you know. Um, but also we came out opposite the second Lord of the Rings, which by that stage had gathered this global momentum and became this huge family event. And Cheaper by the Dozen, I, I remember, came out uh, uh, the same week and did really well. And um, I don't know, it's, you know, there's an alchemy to it. There's the, the, who knows there's a magic to it. It just didn't, it wasn't sold right or there was no way to sell it right. Yeah, that's such a bummer. I, I mean, I still, I still get goosebumps every time I hear that J James Newton Howard score. I mean, it's, it's, oh, yeah. oh, it's incredible. No, every part of the craft department is beyond stunning. Really incredible.